A Utah Jazz update for you right here on the Monty Show. Um, so we have been having a lot of conversations about the Utah Jazz and what are they doing uh, leading up to the NBA draft and into this summer. And I have told you that Laurie Markkinen is a guy they're willing to trade. And I know that's controversial in jazz country and a lot of jazz fans don't want to hear that. But the truth of the matter is that jazz have offers and multiple offers for Laurie Markkinen. What does that mean? Not much because the jazz are going to ask for a windfall. They are going to ask for an enormous return on Laurie Markkinen. At a minimum, a Laurie Markkinen deal is going to be a three-team deal. I have been told for going on a week now that the Jazz, in fact, do have a deal uh, that they could execute uh, that is a larger return than they got for Rudy Gobert, which I would remind you netted them a ton of picks and Walker Kessler at a minimum. Um, I think that this is a deal that they just simply do not want to make. My feeling is, based on sources I've talked to around the NBA, that the Miami Heat are involved in that deal. I think the biggest thing that the Jazz have going for them, should they want to trade and eventually trade Laurie Markkinen, which again, I'm not convinced they will, but should the Jazz want to move Laurie Markkinen, I think what you're going to see is that his salary, which is $18 million, if memory serves, is very trade-friendly. He is on a club-friendly deal. Laurie Markkinen is a guy that is well-respected in this league, and he's a guy that a lot of teams view uh, as that final piece that could put them over the top. Um, and I think certainly the Miami Heat are going to retool that roster. I think they would love to end up with, with Laurie Markkinen, but who is that third team that's involved? The Miami Heat are cash-strapped. They do not have a lot of flexibility to make a trade and would almost certainly not be able to take on additional salary, which, again, is exactly why Laurie Markkinen's contract is such a big trade chip for Danny Ainge and the Utah Jazz. But here's the question you have to ask yourself about the Utah Jazz. Are they all in today, right here and right now, on winning a championship as soon as they can and are capable of winning a championship? The answer is absolutely they are not in on winning a championship. If the Jazz so desired, they have the assets and the human capital to make trades that could put them at the top of the Western Conference this coming season. They will not do that. They have the capital and the human capital to make deals that could win them an NBA championship in the next two or three seasons. They will not do that because historically, and I say if you look at the historical data on the money that Ryan Smith, the owner of the Jazz, has spent and the business that he has conducted, he has never, not once, added significant payroll to this roster. Every major deal, every transformative roster impacting deal the Jazz have done has reduced liability financially, whether it was the Gobert trade. And I'm not even saying the Gobert trade was a bad trade. I'm not even here to sell you that the Donovan Mitchell trade was a bad trade. It's what you did in the wake of those trades, which is absolutely nothing to make this a better basketball club. The Jazz are not ones to go out and spend money. And until they show us they are willing to do that, they will simply be moving parts around to stay right on that line of, hey, are they a play-in team? Hey, are they a playoff team? To keep fans in, in, in what do you want to call it? Invested, locked on the jazz, whatever you want to call it. Until Ryan Smith and Danny Ainge and the Utah Jazz show us that they're willing to be aggressive and outlay cash to make this roster more capable of competing at the top of the West, Jake, I just don't know why we would believe that they would do that. Right, and, and I think that that's, that's the best way to say it. I, I, I think that past behavior is the best indicator of future behavior, and, and, and again, I, I don't even think it's a thing where Ryan never wants to win or isn't concerned with winning long-term. I just think right now it's not a priority, and, and, and I think that we can confidently say that, uh, because of what he's done and not done. And, and everyone seems to think that that's like controversial or like we're trying to hot take Ryan and I'm not. And, and again, uh, every time we talk about Ryan and, and what he's done and not done, I always make it a point to say, it's not personal. It's not like I'm saying Ryan's a bad guy. Cause I don't think Ryan Smith is a bad guy. I think he's probably a good dude. But the reality is when you own a professional sports team, I am going to judge you. Uh, based on what you do and don't do, the trades you do and don't make. I don't know, like Jordan Clarkson. Why is he still here, right? Like, why are why why is Colin Sexton still on the roster? Why is that not gotten done yet? Like, 
there are multiple trades that could be done that uh, don't involve Lori Markinen over the last you know, two seasons that could have made this team better that you just frankly haven't done. And I haven't even gotten to guys like Taylor Hendricks rotting in the G for way too long. Like I, I'm just telling you guys, like I'm, I, it's not personal, but you're not going to get me to say, Oh yeah. Wow. This franchise is in a great place because the franchise isn't in a great place. The, his pocketbook is in, is going to get in a better place because he's going to get taxpayer dollars. He's, you know, the Olympics are coming. Like there's a lot of ways that Ryan Smith can get back into a good place financially. But, but I'm just, I, I'm not going to sit here and try to sell you guys a package of goods that says, Oh yeah, the jazz are man. Winning is all that matters. Cause frankly, I think winning is like fifth or sixth on the list right now. I, I, I think the hockey team is number one. I think number two is Ryan Smith's pocketbook. I think number three is the NBA draft and saying who they could get there. Yeah. You know, I think number four is going to be Jersey rollouts for the jazz again, you know, and, and this is the other point of contention. Like I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why jazz fan won't just say, yeah, we're more concerned about bringing the hockey team in and making sure that goes good. than we are about winning an NBA championship. Well, and, and the biggest question is, if you are not trying to trade Lori Markkinen, why have you not signed him to an extension? Why have you not yet to this point done everything you can do to either sign him or make it very clear you're going to extend him? He's going into a free agent year. And you, you've done this with Jordan Clarkson. You, you, you leave these unanswered questions hanging and lingering. And sources that I've spoken to with the Jazz say that he is, without question, their franchise player. And if you are able to trade a player, it'd be John Collins. If they could trade John Collins, they'd love to trade John Collins. He's their largest contract. And I think they understand, while John was pretty solid for this club last year, but when you look at his deal, the cash that the Jazz still owe John Collins is, is a bit, you know, like he's making $26.5 million. And his deal is a player option for 25 26 So you owe the guy, you're going to wind up owing the guy $53 million. So That's a lot of money on a team where you're not competing for a championship. When does Lori's current contract end? The, after this coming season. So let me get this right. And I'm just looking at numbers here. So you owe John all that money. Lori is 1,000% without any type of hesitation or question tradable right now. You just don't want to trade him. Then, and this is just a guess, right? Speculation, my opinion. Maybe they go all in and they give him the brink struck. You're telling me that next year, when this contract comes to an end, they're going to back up a Brinks truck that's on a level of $40 million a year for a franchise player. I don't buy that. Tell, ne tell, you've who, never when have seen, they done that? You've never seen Ryan Smith do that. Like, And, and everyone's going to say, oh, well, the Rudy contract. The Rudy contract was done when he bought the team, dude. Like That wasn't his deal. That was not his. He what? He, so basically... He bought the Jazz, and 15 minutes later, Dennis Lindsay, then the general manager, put a, a Rudy Gobert contract in front of him that was ridiculous. Is Ryan Smith going to say no? You're not saying no to that. And what did he do? He almost immediately flipped him. And I think people want to give Ryan Smith credit for building a championship team. He has not built a championship team with the Jazz. He's never no. been part of that. No. And if you look at his cap, you have one well-paid player. It's John Collins, not your guy. You you traded for him. Sexton, Markinen, Clarkson, not your guys. You traded for them. And Clarkson obviously has been here, you know, he predates right. Ryan. Hendricks, Keontae George, who your general manager, Danny Ainge, said was not a number one, which still is one of the Worst things I've ever heard Danny Ainge say or do as an NBA executive. It's shocking. Taylor Hendricks, I think he has incredible upside. I believe that Keontae George is a number one guard yeah. in this league. Walker Kessler, which you know where I'm going with this. Yep. Walker Kessler, not 
I falls out of favor last year, not starting, and was arguably the centerpiece of the the deal for Rudy Gobert, available and on the market. And now you have Will Hardy. You hire this supposed young gun head coach. I love the the hire. We broke the news of the hire. I loved it at the time. He's gone nowhere. This team has regressed. Their defense under Will Hardy has been tragically bad. What did Ryan Smith say the other day? Great young coach. He's our guy. We're lucky to have him. Are you lucky to have Will Hardy as your head coach? I, and I'm I'm 100% I'm asking you this question. Did you hire the wrong head coach when you hired Will Hardy? No, I don't think you did. Every day that he's your head coach, do you have a question mark at head coach from this day until he proves that he is not the issue here? Yeah, I think you have a question mark. Will Hardy has never shown the ability to, to build a defense mm -hmm. yeah, or develop young talent. He's not shown the ability to do that. Yeah, and Walker Kessler is the prime example of that. And the problem is, is that this coming season, Key and Taylor Hendricks, and everyone seems to forget about Bryce Sensabaugh, are guys that are going to need more minutes. And what I don't understand, and I'm not even <sighs> saying that this is entirely on Will, but there is definitely a piece that is his responsibility. Uh, I don't understand why you're trying to develop dudes in the G League when you're not relevant in the NBA right now. And if we get to training camp and Lori hasn't been extended, because the thing that I struggle with so much on these deals He's, I think he is eligible for extension. This, like, you can physically sign the contract in late August. You get to training camp and you haven't extended him. And the thing that worries me is nobody is saying that the Jazz are, 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 are negotiating an extension on Lori Markkinen. And almost every time these deals come up, you always hear they're they're going to extend him. They're going August to extend 6th. Him. August sixth. Excuse me. They're going to extend him. I have not heard that one time. I have not heard that. We heard it long before they extended Donovan. Yep. We heard it. We we talked about it on the show long before they extended Rudy. You know. You know. And I'm not bragging. We have really good jazz sources. We have really good NBA sources. I encourage you to go look at our track record. I have not heard maybe once about 18, not even right after the right after the trade. Oh, they're 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 gonna wait and see what Lori Markinen does. His first season here, revelation. Haven't heard word one. Have not heard word one. And what's the biggest difference between what Don and Rudy, the position Don and Rudy were in versus Lori? Well, Don and Rudy were obviously in a position where they were playoff contenders. They were in a place where it was like, hey, you're either going to extend these guys and you're going to conti uh, continue to try to push into the Western Conference Finals or, mm. or you're going to let these guys walk or trade them and you're going to rebuild. So the difference is, is that this Jazz team uh, has no business even talking postseason. And so the idea, and this is this is where I really start to struggle with uh, the philosophy of Ryan Smith in this front office, because I don't believe for a second that Danny Ainge just forgot how to build a roster. Well, and there's murmurs that Danny is a little frustrated with the direction that he wants to go versus the direction he's able to go. We'll see if that ever bears fruit. But I just go back to the Jordan Clarkson thing. Yep. When is Ryan Smith authorized some big trade at the trade deadline? Or a major move? Or it's not how he does business. Those, those deals cost you money. And so the thing that stands out to me is if you don't extend Laurie Markkinen before training camp, do we have this same conversation going a year from now when he's – a free agent, and you're going to have to compete. Well, and does he want to keep playing for you if you're unwilling to extend him now? Because are we going to do the whole Gordon Hayward don't leave thing again? And then your hearts are going to get broken when 
he winds up in Boston or Miami or because that's the problem. He can go to he is a natural fit on loads of teams in this league where he could go to yep. that whatever team you want to use and they are instantly way better. Like Lori Markinen or Julius Randle. Uh Lori Markinen uh or whatever hybrid big. Right? Yeah. If Lori Markinen is in there instead of Kristaps Porzingis. If Lori Mark like there are a million places he could go, man. So, I don't understand like you know, why you're messing around with this extension. Because I do believe that's kind of where you are right now. Like, you're in no man's mm. land with this extension piece. Like, I understand, hey, you got to wait till August 6th to, like, ink the deal. Okay, I get that. That's the rules. Cool. Yeah. But but I agree with you that it does feel very different with Lori than it did with Don and Rudy. It feels like, hey, the talk is, and again, I know I keep bringing this up, but, but I really believe this is the day-to-day. Hockey team, hockey team, hockey team, Olympics, Olympics, Olympics. Oh, by the way, our best player on the Jazz <sighs> is is looking at an extension and doesn't really seem like there's much momentum towards that. Doesn't really seem like that's just a done deal, that that's like assume that he's going to get extended. And maybe they will. I'm certainly not saying they won't extend him. I just think it matters how you handle player extensions because what inevitably what's going to happen? If if they don't extend him, he's obviously going to leave, or they'll trade him, or what you know, whatever whatever his departure looks like. And then Jazz Nation is inevitably going to go down the hey, no good player wants to play for us train. When in reality, what is it? It's the owner of the team is not yet ready, or maybe just doesn't want to invest. Like, and what was the book of uh, the 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 package of goods we were sold? Hey, I'm a Utah guy. I like I'm carrying the torch. We're gonna go out and win, and winning is all I care about. And like are you are are, come are on. is there anybody that's a jazz fan who believes that Ryan Smith will offer authorize an increase of thirty two million dollars a year for Lori Marketing? Because his maximum available number is Four years and two hundred million dollars. He's making eighteen now. You're gonna you're gonna authorize a fifty million dollar per year deal for Lori Markinen. When you just brought in an NHL team, you're endeavoring to do a multi billion dollar deal. Granted, a lot of it's paid by taxpayers, but this land development deal in Salt Lake City. Is there anybody here who believes that Ryan Smith is like, yeah, let's let's kick Laurie an extra $30 million a year? Anybody that believes a $32 million increase for Laurie Marketing, who sees that coming? And then the next obvious question is, let's say that that does happen, just for conversation's sake. Okay, you extend Laurie, you're paying him 50 a year for four years, $200 million. Okay, cool. Then we're going to ask, well, if you're going to pay Lori that doesn't that doesn't that mean you have to go and try and win inside that contract? Like are you just are you just throwing 50 million a year down the window so you can keep some some sense of marketability with this team? Cuz if you if you extend a guy like Lori and you pay him that money and and you don't invest in winning, you don't add to the roster. You have 40 million dollars in cap space. Yet here we are. And a and what what if they're a top 10 draft pick and you're telling me you're not that's why i'm saying it, it 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 does not add up and again it's not personal this is nothing about ryan smith as a dude it's not personal dude but the reality is you're not investing in the team uh, there's no getting around that man like and you look on. at you look at where did mike conley and Alexander Walker end up mm. deep into the playoffs, right? You look at Jared Vanderbilt, Malik Beasley, like those guys you traded were big con contributors to their teams. Jared Vanderbilt being hurt crushed the Lakers defensively. And I, what has this guy done to add to the team? That's what I'm asking. That's where Royce that's where Neal went to the playoffs with the Nets after they traded him, and then the Suns, and then the Suns. So. I'm just saying it is what it is. All right, let's get your thoughts in here. 
on the Jutta Jazz, uh, Mr. Downtown. Lori for Julius Randle in a first-round pick. Julius is a two-time no, All-Star. But, I, but I'm being serious, though. If you put Lori Markin in, in Julius Randle's shoes on this Knicks team, you're telling me they're not better? You're telling me that Lori Mark Because I'm telling you right now, Lori Markin is a better player than Julius Randle is. He's got a better three-point game. more dynamic. He's, got, he's more dynamic. He's way better in transition. He's a better teammate. Like, he's a better player. So... I don't know. Like that was a hypothetical. I'm not saying the money even works on it, but what I am saying is that cool. That that's great. That Julius is a two time All Star. What I want is someone who I can plug in there that's going to actually make and, a difference. And Julius is making twenty eight million dollars. Or he's making eighteen. How much, how much money does Julius have left? Which again brings me right back to you're not paying Lori fifty million a year. Yeah, Julius has a thirty point nine million dollar player option for twenty five. Like I got heartburn over paying Julius thirty a year, dude. Like, did you guys see this story before we get to your comments? Did you see the story about how the Pelicans are not interested in paying Brandon Ingram 50 a year? And I would say, I agree. I'm not interested in paying Brandon Ingram no. 50 a year. So, again. But you paid Zion. So, are you going to pay Lori 50 a year on the Utah Jazz? The, I, I, Come on. That's not been who you are, Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson's contract. We'll give you heartburn. Uh, 36, 39, 42, and 45. Uh, unrestricted free agent, 28, 29. Do you know how much money you owe that guy? I Would you rather give Zion Williamson a $200 million deal or would you rather give Laurie Markkinen a $200 million deal? And if you're Laurie Markkinen, I don't know, you're probably not turning that money down, but the Jazz have never spent that money. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Ronaldo is well-known for underperforming internationally, but he always takes a load of shots. Take the shots on Ronaldo. I love the Euros, you guys. If you're not watching the Euros, you're missing out. Lumanderski, the Jazz have not been serious about having a playoff caliber roster since they traded Don. Yeah. Don't disagree with that. Uh, change the name of the Jazz to the Utah Cryos. As in cryostasis, nothing's going to change for a long time. Wow. Wow. Uh, Brandon Butler, hello. Hypothetically, who is the big name or big salary the Jazz could go after? Would someone like PG take the uh, take the hairline's cash without Max? <laughs> Stop it. Uh, you know, you have no idea. You have no idea. The the Jazz seem inexplicably linked to Tyler Hero, and I hope that's not the case. If you trade Laurie Markkinen, you're going to have to trade for dudes. You're not going to be able to go out and sign a, a premier free agent if you're the Jazz. Right. That's not that's not who you are and where you are. You haven't won. You haven't won in recent times. You've traded well-respected veterans, and everybody's gotten better since they left here. It makes it a tough sell to a free agent. But if you are if you are somebody that's looking to unload a contract, the Jazz can absolutely be a destination. I mean, there there's there's no doubt about that. But this is the Russell Westbrook conversation when everybody told me I was stupid and he's going to play for the Jazz and they're going to make him suit up. They were never he was never playing here. He was he they never that was never going to happen. Yeah, they were never he was never playing here. I think you have to use some common sense here. The Jazz have to make a deal. And those deals, the deals that get made are very rarely ones you know about. You had no idea Rudy was going to Minnesota. You had no idea Dom was going to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You knew those deals were going to happen. You just didn't know where and for who. Like, who'd have thought that Minnesota would have included all those picks and Walker Kessler? Nobody would have thought that. And I just, I think you look at the, the, the landscape of the NBA, the jazz need everything. You just called out and said, your point guard's not a number one point guard in his first year. Like, and, and again, it's the David Fisdale thing. How do you let that guy go? And where's the, where's your development piece? So Brandon, I think it's a very tough sell. Uh, the rules say they cannot extend him until August, right? That's yeah, what we were saying. August, August 6th. 6th. Uh, I miss old Carl Malone, John Stockton, Jazz from back in the day. A totally different era. Um, let's see. James says, is there any way Dallas could trade for Lori? I do believe that 
if Dallas has Lori, Luca, and Kyrie, they could win a championship. I mean, I, I, in a roundabout way, any deal for Lori Markin is probably going to be three teams. Yeah. Because I also look at Dallas's salary cap and Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban's been interesting in the way that he structured his finances in Dallas. But you're super top heavy. You've got $84 million invested in Luca and Kyrie. And then it's Timmy and PJ Washington. And I mean, you're, you're super top heavy. You are, you have some cap space where you could, where you could make some moves. And, but the other thing I think you have to worry about is like, who are you willing to, who are you willing to give up? I mean, are, are you, are you really telling me that PJ Washington's not an invaluable part of that team? I think he was incredibly important to Dallas. Is does Tim Hardaway have 17 or 16.1 million dollars in trade value? No. Probably doesn't. You know, good old Danny Gafford. Gafford made himself some money. I no think doubt. he did. Yeah, he made are himself you, some money. Are you willing to trade a guy like Derek Lively? Because people are going to ask. No, I he, would not I, trade Lively. I, I think he wants he's going to get an extension with them at some point. But it'll be interesting. I I what do you do with a guy like Jaden Harvey, who I thought actually acquitted himself quite well? In pressure situations. I don't know. Dallas has some questions to answer. Uh, is Danny Ainge hands tied? You mean are Danny Ainge's hands tied? I, to a certain extent. Well, isn't every front office guy, you know, he every trade's got to get approved by the owner. So, I mean, to some level, every guy is. Uh, the Jazz with Lori right now are at best 13th in the West just because of what's built around him. Yeah. And, and that's the other you know, ball breaker, if you will, for jazz fans, you you look around the West and the bad teams are getting better and you're, you know, respectfully not getting better. <laughs> like, I would agree. Uh, to Jake's point, Ryan Smith's priorities don't seem very jazz focused. They're not, not right now. How could they be? Yeah. You know, you're yeah. The Utah Yetis should be taking his priority or excuse me, the Utah Hockey Club that is eventually going to be the Yetis and you're going to make it awkward and announce it when you can't have Yeti uniform how, or branding. I love how everyone, when they announced that they did that last week, when they did that rollout, if you will, everyone's like, oh, these are just temporary. I don't care if they're temporary or not. They're it's brutal, awkward, bro. It's awkward. Like The timing's awkward. You're going to announce, you announce the two final names. It's going to be Yetis. You announce the two final names. Before the season starts, you're going to announce what the name's going to be a year from now. And you're not going to have the ability to sell Yeti merch, Yeti sweaters, Yeti. So again, we're going to have an awkward uniform thing with the Jazz and the and the Yetis. With SEG. How? Time after time. Uh, yeah, I think if they would max him out, big payment front-loaded contract. But they may not be the best path to continue. When has Ryan Smith ever cut somebody a huge check? And I don't, I'm not sure how that pans with his situation. I don't think so. I, I don't know why, you know, so if you think about a $200 million deal, what's he going to cut him a check for 80? I mean, you're not going to cut him a check for half his contract. Uh, Marcus Stuckey. Hello. Good to see you. The Utah Jazz should be interesting in nothing but picks and uh, cash right now. Bob. But this is my point. But how long are you going to... This team has been collecting assets since before you popped out of the womb. Like you're... The 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 <laughs> right? idea of, oh, hey, we're we're collecting and we're building the war chest. and But by the way, we prioritize winning and we want to win. Well, and we passed on Devin Booker and a thousand like, other NBA stars. But that's the other thing too. Like, so you guys remember when they... The, the Keontae George draft, right? And they got... That was a big deal. They picked him up. Everyone was excited, right? And now... Like the fact that Danny's kind of hating on dude is like, so is that draft just another waste? Is that draft not, is that no longer a good draft? Cause I thought, and I'm with you. I think Keontae George is going to be number one for somebody, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be this team. The thing that I struggle with is we all talk a big game and this guy's a star and that guy's a star. I'm again, if you look at the history of this team, and you look at where they have picked. Tell me again why I should believe that your, your draft picks turn into superstars. You haven't had that since Gordon Hayward. 
Your draft picks, Dante Exum was a bust. And where's he? Playing for a championship with Dallas. Oh, right. Like he he was a butt, like Gorgie Dang, like Trey Lyles. Now you turn Trey Lyles into, okay, great. I'm with you on that. Uh, Torian Prince. I look at these other guys and I say to myself, Josh Hart is an integral performer in this league now, not on your roster. You look at the Grayson Allens, the Yudoka Azabukis of the world. Like this team does not draft well. This team has not historically drafted well. And I just, I go back to like the, I mean, and you can pick the year that you want, man. You look at, you look at the guys in this league and you look at the names that were taken in the 2023 draft. Obviously there was only one Victor Wambanyama. You took Taylor Hendricks nine and stashed him in the G league. When I think guys like, I don't know, they, I mean, like who was who was taken after you that mattered? Pro, Derek Lively probably is a guy that you would point to, but you you took Keontae at sixteen, and okay, those are two guys. But do we have any belief that those two guys will be productive, all star level players for the Jazz? What is our belief system when the general manager came out and told us how crappy Keontae George is? I'm exaggerating, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I I think the struggle is like it's worse than it was with the draft now because I don't believe that you can develop guys. That's the problem. And and it's not this is a Will Hardy thing, but it's not just Will Hardy. I, I from a franchise big picture perspective, the Jazz have never you know, develop guys into huge difference makers. And everyone wants to say, oh, well, what about Gobert and all those defensive player of the year awards? Yeah, but but I could have developed him into the best into? rim protector in the league. Like, What did that not, turn into? Yeah, like it's not like that turned into uh, a Western Conference championship. Is it a, is it, and again, if we're talking about collecting assets, is it Apollo Boncaro? Is it a Chet Holmgren? You Like I look at, I look at 2022. Is, is it a... Who, who, what is it? Cause I, I don't, I don't see that. I, yes, you got Walker Kessler, but what is that turned into? Apparently a bench guy, right? That it, <laughs> like, it's, it's turned into not a lot. And so I struggle. I, I look up and down the jazz draft history. They don't have a history of taking assets and turning them into productive goddamn players. So then we get asked, well, why don't you guys talk more jazz? Why don't you know why? Like, it seems like you guys aren't talking as much jazz. What's there to talk about? Like, what, what, are, like, what, what are we supposed to do with this? Like, you, you're not drafting well. You're not developing well. You're not spending on the roster. It seems like there's hesitation in extending Larry Markkinen. Uh, we're getting uh, all this hockey team stuff. We're getting taxpayer dollars to fund it. We're getting the Olympics. Uh, and I'm just sitting here saying, great, cool, awesome. When's the next time you're going to win anything? Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's where we're at. I think ultimately the Jazz will not. I don't think the Jazz will trade Lori Market. And that's just the feeling I get from talking to people. It would take such an inordinate amount of return. And I think that Ryan Smith is very worried about fan sentiment right now. And I think my biggest fear is that a year from now we'll be having this exact same conversation about Lori Markkinen. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is terrifying to me. It is. Uh, where do you guys come down on a team tanking? I think it's horrendous. Ryan Smith has no reason to tank. But are they even tanking? Because this is the other thing. You're either tanking or you're doing everything you can do to win a championship. That's the God's honest truth in the NBA. You're either the Lakers trying to make trades and... You're either the Knicks trying to make trades. You're going to get Drew Holiday if you're the Celtics. Or you're the Jazz who aren't doing a whole lot of anything. That's the truth. So is tanking real? Sure, I guess. But are you operators or not? They they haven't been operators. Uh, why can't they call it the Yetis? They stick with Yetis. Why no S? Because the Yeti, I don't know. I because they're the Jazz and the Yeti, I don't know. <laughs> the Jazz will be tanking again this year. I hope not. I think Ryan Smith is at a critical point in his 
stature in this state. And I wish I wasn't the only one. But again, I'll be the only one to to ask, why does a billionaire need billions in handouts? Why does he need taxpayer money? He's a billionaire. Uh, Fight on natties. Would Danny uh, ever make a trade deal with the Lakers? He's made multiple trades and deals with the Lakers. He's done that already. OG Gary, the Jazz is a developmental team for the league. They they ain't serious about winning. You know. Uh, Now that the NBA season is over, time to focus when Dragon Ball comes out. You know. Cool. I I must. With that, uh, with that is happening in the sports world. The last year, the Jazz relevance has been at the bottom of the list. I watched three games this past year when it was back on TV. You see what I mean? Like it's not like I remember that too. That's another great point. I hadn't thought about that in a minute. Like the whole Jazz Plus TV thing. That was a wreck. Like I don't know. I just didn't have a great experience with Jazz Plus, and and I'm gonna be honest, like. I'm not really inclined to pay for it anymore. I'm not like, and, and I know because I can get it in the middle of the season if they're doing well. Yeah, like I. But Jake, do you even watch jazz games? What's to watch? Like I, I hate to say that, but what's to watch? I can, I can I, honestly. Yeah. If you and I would challenge people to do this just to try it. Right now, with jazz games, with where this team is at, and the lack of relevancy in the market, if you. Don't want to pay for Jazz Plus, you're going to be just fine. You're not missing out on a whole lot. And that's really sad because when the Jazz are good, it's much better for our show. When the Jazz are oh, good, much and better. Jazz Nation is engaged and we can talk Jazz every day, that's way better for us. And yep. it's so incredibly frustrating that that even when you're bad, we can't get like real good in-depth trade talk that we actually think has a reasonable chance of happening. Because